Just got the December feature drop for the Pixel 8 series of devices, and that means it's time for my real kind of long-term review of the Pixel 8 Pro. Kind of had to wait for the feature drop because so much of what makes the Google Pixel device are the features that Google includes into their version of Android that a review without some advertised upcoming tweaks would have just been a very half-assed, half baked review. Now I'm going to start off this review of the Pixel 8 Pro talking about some of the improvements over the Pixel 7 Pro, which was my last device that I had, and what those kind of changes have done to the overall user experience. Things like battery life, which have seen a pretty tangible improvement, especially at 120 hertz, partially because of that new Super Actua display that's, that is uh, in this device. It's a more efficient display, meaning you can run this at a higher brightness with less power usage. It's also LTPO. And on my Pixel 7 Pro, there was a pretty noticeable difference between 120 hertz and 60 hertz. There's much less difference at 120 hertz on this device, and a lot of that does have to do with the display. That's not to say that the battery life has been perfect, but with a ton of different updates, the standby 5G battery drain has pretty much been eliminated as an issue. Using the device over 5G a lot though, you will notice that 5G just consumes more electricity. Another tweak or another improvement that Google has made with the Pixel 8 Pro over the Pixel 7 Pro is something that has to do with charging, although I highly doubt it's actually hardware. Now, Google claimed that the device, at least on the Pro models, can now utilize the full 30 watts of USB-C power delivery with a PPS enabled charger. Whether or not that's actually a hardware improvement or Google has just given these devices a different thermal curve for charging, I don't know. I know that there is definitely a charging improvement on the Pixel 7a after updates, so this might just be software. Going from anywhere between 10 to 15% up to 65% or so takes me in the realm of 25 to 30 minutes with an ambient temperature right now in California of around 70 degrees, which is on the cooler end. You might have a different user experience in hotter climates, but right now I'm able to get at least 50% battery charge if the device is below 50% with a 30 watt charger. In my opinion, the charging experience on this device has been great, especially combined with some of the improvements in battery life. Another improvement compared to the Pixel 7 Pro, flat display. Been phenomenal, I love it. Bugs on this device have been virtually non-existent, especially in regards to any kind of serious bugs. There have been a few things, and I think that has to do with Android being updated before all of the other apps get a chance to catch up with it, but I haven't had any kind of bugs that have gotten in the way of functionality. There have been some minor hiccups, but that stuff has been like, if I'm listening to Spotify and to get a call on WhatsApp while using my Pixel Buds, the kind of Bluetooth audio routing can be kind of laggy. Now, thermal performance over the Pixel 7 Pro. I didn't have much in the way of issues with thermal performance on my Pixel 7 Pro when I wasn't using a case and I was in ambient temperatures that were cooler than 50 degrees Celsius or like 110 degrees Fahrenheit. But in general, my Pixel 8 Pro, I've been playing uh, Warships Blitz max settings, uh, max graphic settings, unlimited frame rates while charging the device with a 30 watt charger in a case for more than 20 minutes and I am getting 112 frames per second consistently. Is it the most demanding game? No. I have also done long video rendering export tests in CapCut and I have not had any kind of issues with the device getting hot and the device not being able to kind of finish the video rendering task. All that is to say that the type of GPU on the Pixel 8 series of devices isn't the most optimized. And we have seen things as simple as minor firmware upgrades, double the frame rates in things like Genshin Impact or Fortnite uh, on the Pixel devices, which is really, really impressive. I haven't had anything in, like any kind of issues with thermal throttling. That's not to say that the device is perfect because there are a couple of things that still get to me which I don't like about this device. The first thing that I don't like about it is modem drain. 
It is improved. And the standby modem drain is really improved, but it might just be the fact that I'm not used to 5G, but when using 5G, it consumes a ton of battery life. It might be that it's the, not the most efficient modem, but the standby battery drain issue is solved. The second thing that I dislike about it is the lack of manual controls in video. And I'm gonna talk about the camera kind of as we get more into this review, but this device is not perfect. The, the lack of manual video controls is quite frustrating. Now, to kind of talk about the overall performance of this device, um, day to day, the performance of this device has been great. I have had zero issues with performance in any of the day to day things or any of the normal things which I do things like editing video, playing games, using social media, messaging. Now, I said that they fixed the battery drain or they fixed some of the battery drain issues and talking about the overall battery life experience of this Pixel 8 by itself, we're looking at eight hours of screen on time regularly on Wi-Fi and uh, on 5G. If you turn the 5G off and you set the display to 60 Hertz and you're going mixed between LTE and Wi-Fi, you could probably get 10 hours of battery life screen on time, no issue. When I'm using this device to listen to music, screen off definitely isn't the most power efficient when listening and streaming music. If I download music to the device and I'm just doing that, uh, the battery life is pretty good. So again, modem, standby drain, and pretty much fixed, but modem drain when using the device, even screen off, still not great. Screen, on the subject of screen on, screen off. The screen is absolutely incredible. They've made a huge improvement to the screen with the super actual display. Using this device into direct sunlight, totally doable. No needing to do the awkward kind of shading of your device if you're using it outside. It's got great viewing angles. It's nice. It's really, really responsive. Uh, and it's LTPO and 120 hertz, which means that you can run it at 120 hertz and not really feel any kind of uh, real side effects towards battery life. And this is the first device that I use at 120 Hertz constantly because it is so good. And I have a difficult time going back to that. Now, along with that screen, if you're using it to watch content, the overall media consumption experience of this device is excellent as well. It's not something that's that much of an improvement over the Pixel 7 Pro. The Pixel 7 Pro had a great speakers, but the combination of the Super Actua display and the really, really nice, well-matched speaker at the top and the bottom of the device makes it a very, very enjoyable media experience. Rounding out this review, I have to talk about software because it's been the number one place that Google has shined in differentiating itself from other Android manufacturers, but it's also been the Achilles heel of Google because with all of those features, oftentimes, comes bugs or kind of comes growing pain of being an early adopter. And I'm really happy to say that this is the first Pixel device out of my Pixel 6, Pixel 6a, Pixel 7a, Pixel 7 Pro, and now my Pixel 8 Pro that I've gotten. And it's basically come bug free. Cameras, maybe the most anticipated aspect of a Pixel device is its cameras. And now that we have the December feature drop, we can talk a little bit about night sight video. It's something that I like, but also really dislike at the same time. In order to utilize night sight video, you need to have backup for Google Photos turned on by default. Otherwise, you have to manually upload every single night sight video that you took in your library. Partially this has to do with Google needing to use their servers to go ahead and process the video. Also, this has to do with Google wanting you to utilize features that take up more space on your Google Drive so you can pay them more money for more storage. I like it because it's a cool feature. I dislike it because I see how they're gonna make money from consumers using this feature without any other knowledge. Another thing that I noticed that's a little bit frustrating about this night sight video, when you click on the video to start, it gives you this really gray washed out video that looks kind of like a log video format, which I'm using right now to film this. And I'll turn the LUT off so you can see how kind of gray and washed out I look. Turn the LUT back on so you can see what that does. A moment after you start the video on the Pixel 8 Pro of in night sight, it goes from this gray washed out video to like the full color version and it looks great. That's got me thinking that somehow Google is recording in some kind of log format on here, sending it to the cloud for them to kind of color grade and do background noise suppression and then send back the device. If Google's gonna do that, I would love to just have log on my phone for Google to kind of match Apple's kind of video controls 
Will that happen? Highly unlikely. I would just like to see that happen. Coming from the Pixel 7 Pro, still images for the telephoto and for the ultra and for the regular camera, you're not gonna see that big of a difference. The biggest difference I've seen with cameras on the Pixel 8 Pro has been the ultra wide. Uh, and I've also noticed that the low light dynamic range of this device has been great. What that means for you is that you can use any of these cameras in a low light environment and the range of brightness that you can get is really, really good. Google continues to improve the video features on these devices, but I still feel like they lead the pack for photo and for video, they're still really struggling. They did give us a full manual control mode for photo, but for video, it still really kind of pales in comparison to what we have from Samsung for Samsung's pro video mode that has all of the controls that a creator would want to have. And I still think that Samsung's video camera modes are some of the best and most kind of well flushed out, well featured video modes on Android. And that kind of takes me to the overall conclusion of this, which is Pixel 8 Pro, bust, success, should buy, shouldn't buy. Well, at the launch price point of this device at a thousand bucks, I'm gonna tell you, I don't think it's worth it. Not when you can get Pixel 7 Pros for so cheap right now. There have been a ton of deals on the Pixel 8 Pro. And if you can get a Pixel 8 Pro for the 550, 600, 650 range, I would tell you to jump on it because at $600, this device is a flagship. It feels like a flagship, it performs like a flagship, and it has flagship features. Peace.